That's awesome. Sports overload. This is the time of year that's my favorite because it's fantasy draft time. College football is just starting. We've got baseball where where people where teams are starting to play meaningful games because we're coming up to uh, playoffs here soon, and we literally have NFL football days away. Do you guys realize that the NFL season starts in five days? Thursday night football. We're almost there. And speaking of almost there, we are 45 seconds away from this draft starting. And Priority Mail has not logged in yet. Which is not going to matter because I'm pretty sure Christian McCaffrey is going to go one overall. And I'm sure he has his auto set up for that anyways. Let's see if Priority Mail makes it for this draft. I always try to make sure drafts are after the last preseason games and after final cuts. I absolutely hate wait, uh, drafting early. Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. We are 10 seconds away. Let's get the countdown. 5, 4 3, 2, one, good luck everybody. Welcome Priority the mail the on the clock. And I Draft have to, <laughs> I've got to mute that. I forgot to do that again. Priority mail is on the clock. Now he's not logged in. You get a minute 30 per pick. He is not logged in. So it's going to roll through a full sequence of him, of his pick time before it auto drafts for him. It'll give him the full time. So, and if he logs in and then logs back out, it's going to go through it. Now, if he makes it this entire time without logging in, his next pick will be automatically picked if he doesn't log in in the meantime. This is a 14-round draft. And we're going to be getting into some depth with these picks as well. So, I'll be showing off the teams as we get a little bit further. I won't be switching between uh, screens for teams yet, but I will be at some point. Up on the screen, you're going to notice here are the, this is the projections. So this is the top 16 picks that you see on your screen. As people select them, they will slowly disappear as they're selected. So number one is going to be Christian McCaffrey coming off the board unless Priority Mail has his settings changed where he has his own list. So here we go. Christian McCaffrey coming off the board. Number one to Priority Mail. Gravy Train on the clock at number two. Let's see where Gravy Train goes with his pick. My guess is going running back either Alvin Kamara or Dalvin Cook slash Derrick Henry. One of the three of them would be my guess. Alvin Kamara goes off the board at number two for Gravy Train. And now Nice Chubb is on the board. Or is it, excuse me, is on the clock. Dalvin Cook to nice chub at number three number four coming up derrick henry goes to the kansas city kings hooligans is on the clock so we went one two three four at running back does number five go running back as well we saw travis kelsey go early in the last draft i'm curious if that trend continues <clears throat> Saquon Barkley is listed high in this draft, and I'm a little nervous about that, honestly. He's coming back off of his injury and not sure if he's going to play uh, right away. A little curious about that. <clears throat> Jordan David says pick five is just is such a drop off from top four. I would agree to some extent, except for if you're talking about switching over to wide receiver. Because at wide receiver, Devontae Adams put up more points than the running backs did last year. So I would argue about the fall off, unless you're talking about just at running back. Just at running back, yes. 
Devontae Adams goes to Hoyer's Hooligans. Pigskin King is on the board at number six. So Devontae Adams as, ends up as the number one receiver off the board, fifth pick overall. Pigskin King is on the board at pick number six of the first round. Sure, Jordan. Uh-huh. <clears throat> you can say that all you want. We know the truth. If you can't read the comment board, Jordan says, that pick was in no way influenced by your comment for the record. And then we have Travis Kelsey goes off the board at number six for the Pigskin King, followed by Ezekiel Elliott goes to Team Miller. Elliott going before Barkley. And now we have No Glory. I'm assuming that's No Guts, No Glory. On the board, on the clock, pick number eight. And we have Nick Chubb goes to All Guts, No Glory. Pick number eight. Pick number nine, Ancient City Aces on the clock. <laughs> All Guts, No Glory. There you go. I see that now, Linda. Thank you. Jordan saying, I've had that pick five for all my drafts first two drafts i took zeke and eckler so i had to go a different route here makes sense change it up a little bit absolutely ancient city aces with 50 seconds to go and takes austin eckler at number nine team eight is on the board with pick number 10 still staring saquon barkley down at rank number four which i don't buy into rank number four right there <clears throat> i could see him going late first sure so 10 11 12 early two absolutely i'm a little as i mentioned earlier i'm a little skeptical of the number four rank that yahoo or excuse me that espn put him at i i'm nervous just because of coming back off the acl injury and I know there's been talks that he's going to play week one. But until he's on the field and he's running comfortably week one, I can't put him that high. <clears throat> In my own personal ranking, I put him outside of the top ten. Just for that alone. Now, I hope he exceeds my expectations. I just don't know if he will. And there we go. Team eight selecting Tyreek Hill. At number 10, on the clock is Players. Jesus taking Jonathan Taylor. The true Players taking JT from the Colts. Running back for the Colts. I would 100% agree that Saquon should be drafted ADP later than number 4 overall. He better be. Smart fantasy players aren't going to buy into that at the top 4. <clears throat> Now we have AJ on the board, rounding out the first round. Now, keep in mind, this is a snake draft. So AJ takes AJ, Aaron Jones, Green Bay Packers running back to round out round one. Now he leads round two and takes Saquon Barkley to start off round two. So West Coast AJ takes Aaron Jones and Saquon shoring up his running back position with those two back on the board is true players with his second pick and let's see the direction true players goes does he stick with running back <clears throat> or does he go wide receiver Maybe tight end. Doubtful he goes quarterback. Play has drafted Jonathan Taylor in the first round. Maybe pairing him up with a Gibson. Or going another direction and going Diggs or Hopkins. Or even Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley was drafted at the end of the first round in division two so lasting until the 
third pick, second pick. Antonio Gibson, he shores up his running back position going Antonio Gibson paired with Jonathan Taylor. Team 8 is now on the clock at pick number 15. Looking at Antonio Gibson, if we're seeing our teams right here, we have West Coast AJ going Jones and Barkley. We have True Players going Taylor and Gibson. So two teams automatically getting their running backs taken care of early. Not a bad move at all, as a lot of people tend to have to stream running backs because they can't get both secured for RB1 position. Now we're probably going to see a fair amount of wide receivers coming off the board because right now we're looking at Diggs, Hopkins, Ridley, Metcalf. Those four... And we see Najee Harris come off the board for Team 8. So Team 8 even goes running back. As he already took Tyreek Hill in the first round. So Harris and Tyreek Hill. That's not a bad combo right there, ladies and gentlemen. Followed by Stefan Diggs going to the Ancient City Aces. And I kind of figured we were going to see a run on wide receivers here coming soon. Austin Eckler paired with Stefan Diggs. Just be careful, aces. You can see two seven, week seven bye weeks right there. Don't overload your sevens. Stefan Diggs, Buffalo wide receiver going to the Ancient City Aces. On the clock is all guts, no glory. Pick number 17. So this is the second round that we're in right now. And he takes DK Metcalf. All guts, no glory taking DK Metcalf wide receiver for the Seahawks to pair with Nick Chubb and then Miller going after Clyde Edwards Zelaire going after excuse me Joe Mixon sorry my screen skipped Joe Mixon so pairing Ezekiel Elliott with Joe Mixon so the wide receiver run ended fairly quick and then Clyde Edwards Zelaire went to all uh, the pigskin king they went quick all of a sudden. So El Air and Kelsey for the Pigskin King. Be very careful with drafting early. Your big guys having bye weeks the same week. Then Calvin Ridley comes off the board to Hoyer's Hooligans. And here we're seeing some wide receiver pairings. Devontae Adams with Calvin Ridley. That could be a deadly combo. Then we see D Hop goes off the board to the Kansas City Kings. Derek Henry and D Hop ending up on the same team together. I will say right here, I'm going to go back to Hoyer's Hooligans. I like that pairing. Devontae Adams and Calvin Ridley could be a deadly combo. And nice Chubb gets a wide receiver spot taken care of by drafting A.J. Brown, Tennessee's wide receiver. So he puts Dalvin Cook at running back in round one paired with aj brown in round two gravy train on the board only two picks left in the second round gravy train earlier having the second overall pick took alvin kamara at pick number two let's see if gravy train goes with a wide receiver this time maybe a justin jefferson hey keenan allen's still on the board as well or he could go tight end Shored up with Dar Darren Waller, arguably the second to third best tight end in fantasy right now. And here we go. Here's a run of picks. Keenan Allen goes to Gravy Train and then two auto picks by the Beaverton Priority Mail, Justin Jefferson and Darren Waller. So Gravy Train goes Keenan Allen for wide receiver. Beaverton Priority Mail goes Justin Jefferson. And Darren Waller. Waller, the fantasy standout tight end last year from Vegas, who's really done a great job of resurrecting his career after he's had some substance abuse issues early on. <clears throat> Fantastic picks right there, actually, for being an auto draft of Justin Jefferson and Darren Waller. And they're set up with Christian McCaffrey at running back. Beaverton Priority Mail could be having a really good under-the-radar draft. 
being an auto draft. Gravy Train back on the board with pick number two of the third round. Now, we just saw Gravy Train a few moments ago take Keenan Allen and puts Keenan Allen with his running back of Alvin Kamara. This would probably be a good spot for him to pick up a tight end. Elite tight ends are tough to come by. I will say that. And there it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. I called it. George Kittle off the board to Gravy Train. Not saying I influenced it. Saw that one coming. Now we get pick number three of the third round, going to Nice Chubb. Nice Chubb is with his last pick, took A.J. Brown. So he's got Cook and Brown. Now the question becomes, do you lock down a running back now? He goes wide receiver, C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys, a breakout player that I have slated for this year. And then we have a shock happening in the second round already. Kansas City Kings, no surprise actually, taking Patrick Mahomes, getting the quarterback position out of the way. Patrick Mahomes is off the board to the Kansas City Kings. James Robinson then comes off the board to the Hoyers Hooligans, getting his running back out of the way, the first one of his team since he got Adams and Ridley before. David Montgomery comes off the board for all, excuse me, it looks like all every time I look at it. It says AR Pigskin King, I'm assuming AR initials. Pigskin King taking David Montgomery, followed by Team Miller drafting the running back out of Philadelphia, Miles Sanders. Pigskin King getting two of his running backs done. Miller going for his flex position early as he went three straight running backs. <clears throat> now, if you notice one thing here, my arrow right there on the screen, as you see, is highlighting the bye weeks. So as I'm scrolling through teams, make sure you're paying attention to bye weeks, because especially if you're playing in this league, be watching your opponent's bye weeks. When I'm playing against people, I'm always looking to see who's gonna be in trouble on a bye week, because I'm gonna pick up their players. Allen Robinson comes off the board for all guts, no glory. Chicago wide receiver to pair with DK Metcalf, followed by Mark Andrews, tight end out of Baltimore, going to the Ancient City Aces. So the Aces went running back, wide receiver, tight end. I'm trying to make sure they get them locked down. What did I, you said you were, uh, were in round three. Did I say round two? I must have said round two at some point. <clears throat> now, I will say this. <clears throat> Getting an elite tight end locked up is very important. <clears throat> Reaching for a tier two tight end can kill your fantasy team. Chris Carson comes off the board to team eight in round three as we're reaching the end of round three as team eight now has Najee Harris, Chris Carson, and Tyreek Hill and the true players is on the board. Oh, was Mahomes actually a round two? Or was he round three? I must have said that wrong. Where is he? Oh yeah, round three, pick four. I must have been looking at the wrong part of the screen. Josh Jacobs comes off the board to True Players as True Players then gets his flex position on, pairing his third running back with Jonathan Taylor and Antonio Gibson out of Washington. Some have said that they're a little nervous about Josh Jacobs this year with the addition of Kenyon Drake to the roster. 
but I still believe that Josh Jacobs is going to be more of the bell cow back with um, more of the passing down situations being handled by Kenyon Drake. And now we have AJ on the clock. West Coast AJ. And he is going to finish out round uh, round three with back-to-back -back picks starting off round four. As you see on the screen there, he went dual running backs last time. Let's see if he goes dual wide receivers this time. Maybe he'll go quarterback. Tyler Lockett comes off the board to end round three. Starting round four is back to West Coast AJ. So AJ's looking at a, a strong start to begin with. Jones and Barkley sealing his running back room. And he starts off his wide receiver room with Tyler Lockett. That is not a bad way to start your running back pairing. And then he goes flex position with running back DeAndre Swift, who lasted until round four. True play is back on the board. After going Josh Jacobs and going heavy on the running backs in his first three picks. And he goes Josh Allen taking a quarterback in round four. Josh Allen is the second quarterback off the board. Followed by Team 8 taking Terry McLaurin, Scary Terry, Najee Harris, Chris Carson, Tyreek Hill, and Terry McLaurin. Ancient City Ace is on the board, and they take Miles Gaskin, the running back, out of Miami. Eckler, Gaskin, Diggs, and Mark Andrews for the Ancient City Aces. All guts, no glory is on the clock. All guts started out the draft taking Nick Chubb in the first round and then followed it up with a pair of receivers, DK Metcalf and Allen Robinson. Maybe they'll go flex position here, take another wide receiver, tight end potentially, or get that last running back spot filled. If you look on the screen at the projections that are standing open, you got about 15, no, about 10 straight picks of wide receivers as far as projections go before you hit a running back at Chase Edmonds, Gus Edwards, and Javante Williams with Kareem Hunt sitting right there as well. Keep in mind, everybody, Kareem Hunt finished just 10 points behind Nick Chubb in fantasy last year. And all guts goes Mike Evans, receiver out of Tampa Bay, goes into the flex position. And then Team Miller goes Kareem Hunt, as I just stated, that Hunt finished with 10 points less than Nick Chubb last year. That ended up being a bench spot for Miller as he drafts four, count them, one, two, three, four straight running backs. Amari Cooper taken by Pigskin King. We are in round four right now. Pigskin King takes Amari Cooper as his first wide receiver. Clyde edwards Elaire, David Montgomery, Amari Cooper, and Travis Kelsey. Kelsey being his first round draft pick. Hoyer's Hooligans is currently in selection mode. We are on the tail end of round four with Hoyer's Hooligans. We have the Kings, the Kansas City Kings on deck. Nice Chubb in the hole, Gravy Train, and the Beaverton Priority Mail rounding out round four. And Hoyer's Hooligans goes running back and takes Gus Edwards, which got a massive bump after the injury to J.K. Dobbins. And then we've got Kansas City Kings grabbing Robert Woods. Wide receiver for the Rams, Robert Woods off the board. 
Chris Godwin comes off next to Nice Chubb as Nice Chubb fills out flex position at wide receiver. And of course, Zeus has to spam chat with eBay sales. <clears throat> Gravy train on the clock. 40 seconds left. Second to the last pick of round four. I honestly thought that was Zeus when I saw that. I actually thought you post or that somebody, uh, a bot or something, had broken into the league and posted that. I seriously thought that was spam. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna have to, I thought I was gonna have to restart my computer. <laughs> All right, Gravy Train, Chase Edmonds running back from Arizona. And then we have Adam Thielen and Cooper Cup, a pair of wide receivers grabbed by Beaverton Priority Mail. So auto picks are actually doing a pretty dang good job for Beaver Beaverton Priority Mail. Christian McCaffrey, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Darren Waller, and Cooper Cup. Not too shabby. The only thing I would be concerned about is Jefferson and Thielen both having the, obviously the same bye week because of being a pair from the same team and I typically don't like to have both my receivers from the same team anyways now we're back to gravy train on the board as we're in round five gravy train has done a fairly good job of spreading out his bye weeks and now takes Javante Williams running back rookie running back out of Denver as that's now his third running back on his roster and he puts him into the flex position and Javante Williams could be a sneaky pick for rookie of the year I don't think we're quite going to see rookie of the year performance because uh, he's not a quarterback but he definitely could be a sleeper for such an award. <clears throat> nice Chubb is up right now. And looking at that goes Kyler Murray, quarterback for Arizona. Gets his quarterback in round five. Kyler Murray. And then we have the Kansas City Kings. Kansas City Kings on the board or on the clock right now with a minute to go. Round five. Is he going to fill his wide receiver or running back position in the flex? Or is he going to get his last running back spot out of the way right here by going with a deep running back? And he does. He goes Mike Davis. Atlanta running back so Kansas City Kings now has filled the top five positions in his roster Patrick Mahomes at quarterback Derek Henry and Mike Davis at running backs D hop and Robert Woods at wide receiver which puts Hoyers hooligans back on the board in round five now does Hoyers hooligans go quarterback here which he could very well do Dak Prescott looks to be the first projected quarterback on the board currently <clears throat> down there at number 67 but then you also have Lamar Jackson sitting right there behind him decisions decisions or shore up your wide receiver position a little more because look at that Deontay Julio DJ Moore Ayuk Higgins Galladay Beckham Anderson Juju Cortland Sutton all sitting right there the next 10 picks are all wide receivers. Could even go TJ Hawkinson. That's a sleeper. Kyle Pitts, maybe. Kyle Pitts could be a game changer for Atlanta. We also have Jerry Judy sitting there on the board. Jerry Judy being 64th is 
ridiculous. Putting Jerry Judy at 64 is a crime. And Hoyer's Hooligans goes T. Higgins. T. Higgins comes off the board before Jamar Chase does for the Bengals. Lamar Jackson comes off as the next quarterback going to Pigskin King. And then we have Kyle Pitts going to Team Miller. Trying to cycle through these a little bit faster. Kyle Pitts, who could potentially help redefine the Atlanta offense. Number four overall pick out of Florida. Tight end, Kyle Pitts. And now we have all guts, no glory on the board. And we are getting close to wrapping up round five. And here we go. All guts, no glory selects Russell Wilson, quarterback for the Seahawks. Followed by Ancient City Aces going DJ Moore. Getting those role players handled right now. On the board, Team 8. Pick number 58. Third to the last pick of the fifth round before we start making our way back. <clears throat> Jordan says, D, uh, Jamar Chase is overrated in my opinion. Didn't play last year and got exposed in the preseason. Would have loved to go DJ Moore or Johnson, but I don't want to double up bye weeks. That makes sense. And there are some who are doubting Jamar Chase's ability given how many passes he dropped in the preseason. Now, he could figure that out. He could get that dealt with. When he has the ball in his hands, he's a playmaker. He caught a couple of bubble screens and, and screens on the outside, and that's about all that he accomplished in the preseason. Julio off the board to Team 8 as he sticks Julio in the flex position. True Players, second to the last pick. Pick number 11 of round 5. Pick number 59. Deontay Johnson, Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver, goes to True Play. As now AJ finishes out round number five and then starts round number six, back to back picks. As he goes, TJ Hawkinson, tight end out of Detroit, and then turns around and goes Chase Claypool. So we end up with two Pittsburgh receivers in the last three picks. Claypool. Paired with Lockett at the wide receiver position. Going back up, True Players, who just took Deontay Johnson moments ago. And I know True Players is a massive Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So is he going to go yet another Steelers player right here? He's a huge Steelers. One of the biggest Steelers fans I've ever seen in my life. Now is he going to go Juju? He could go Juju or Big Ben. He's already got a quarterback, but he could still go Big Ben. Maybe Eric Ebron. Get that tight end spot fixed. And True Play is walks away from the Steelers and goes Jerry Judy, wide receiver for Denver. Judy, I'm surprised, lasted this long. But a lot of people haven't been thinking about him in the preseason. Now T8, Team 8, is on the clock in the 6th round. Does T8 go quarterback? Or does he get the tight end position wrapped up? Right now with Logan Thomas on the board, who Logan Thomas was the third tight end off the board in the last draft that I was emceeing. Or he could go quarterback. Dak is sitting right there. Absolutely, Judy is going to have a breakout season. Judy had a fantastic year last year, and he had crap thrown to him. So absolutely agree that Jerry Judy is, is slept on. Jerry Judy put up 1,000 yards last year.
excuse me, sorry, he put up 856 yards last year. T8 goes Justin Herbert. Quarterback. Charges. Yeah, Judy put up 52 receptions for 856 yards, and that was with bad quarterback play. So just keep that in mind. Now we get Ancient City Aces. We're going to have a run on quarterbacks here by the looks of it. Aaron Rodgers is off the board to the Ancient City Aces for a quarterback that literally led all of fantasy in points last year to last until round six is quite comical. Then we got Big Bobby Tanyan off the board to All Guts, No Glory, Green Bay tight end, followed by Robbie Anderson, Carolina wide receiver. Yes, Rogers Tuesday is back this Tuesday on the Pat McAfee Show, Tuesday morning. Juju comes off the board to the Pigskin King. Lamar Jackson, Clyde Edwards Alaire, David Montgomery, Amari Cooper, Juju, and Travis Kelsey for Pigskin King so far. Now we're looking at hooligans on the board in round six. Hooligans has an empty tight end position and an empty quarterback position right now. I think it would be a reach to have a defense or kicker go this high. So I'm not expecting hooligans to reach on a defense. Maybe we see Brandon Ayuk come off the board. The fact that Odell Beckham Jr. is sitting on the board. Damian Harris goes to his bench, which is not a bad one to have on your bench, especially since he got a big uptick in value because of Sony Michelle getting sent to the Rams. Kansas City Kings turns around and goes with Logan Thomas to shore up the tight end position. And Kansas City Kings is playing the safe game. Patrick Mahomes and D-Hop in 12 for bye weeks. Derrick Henry at 13, Robert Woods at 11, and Kansas City Kings has wrapped out his top six position players. Nice Chubb goes Trey Sermon at running back to finish off his second running back. Daryl Henderson off the board to the Beaverton Priority Mail as it looks like auto-draft again. Wide receiver. Wait, we had... Oh, sorry, I missed it. Dak Prescott went to Gravy Train. That went quick. Holy crap. Gravy Train took Dak Prescott and then Bre Beaverton Priority Mail auto-drafted Brandon Ayuk and Daryl Henderson. So at least got another running back on the board and then Brandon Ayuk for the bench. So Beaverton Priority Mail has four wide receivers. And I'm assuming might be the last of the wide receivers unless I think it's five total, so it's auto it's auto draft. <clears throat> and we are back to Gravy Train. This is moving right along. We are halfway done with this draft. This is round seven. And Gravy Train still has an open wide receiver position that could easily be, be filled by Cortland Sutton, Odell Beckham Jr. Speaking of right there, Odell Beckham Jr. goes off the board right there. Gravy Train takes care of his top seven positions, including flex. Noah Fant, a sleeper, in my opinion, goes to Nice Chubb. As Nice Chubb gets his tight end position filled. That whole sentence just sounds wrong. Nice Chubb gets his tight end position filled. Radio. <clears throat> Kansas City Kings is on the board with pick number seven. And let's see if Kansas City King goes a backup to his quarterback. He goes flex. Brandon Cooks at wide receiver. 
Brandon Cooks at wide receiver. Brandon Cooks at a 99. Brandon Cooks at a 99. The real ones know what I'm talking about. Hoyers Hooligans is on the board. Now, Hoyers Hooligans, little history here, has not taken a quarterback yet, as you see the roster on the screen. Devontae Adams was the first pick. Calvin Ridley was second round. Has not taken a quarterback or a tight end. And in fact, went Damian Harris with his last pick to put on his bench before taking a quarterback and before taking a tight end. Gutsy? Maybe. Could work out for him. We don't know yet. But somebody in the last draft went until round... 10, I believe it was, before they drafted and they picked up Ben Roethlisberger. <clears throat> so it is doable to get a solid quarterback that late and focus on your skill positions before quarterback. And there we go. He fills the tight end position with Tyler Higby for Hoyer's Hooligans. Pigskin King is now on the board. Now, Pigskin King has gone straight up and now fills his flex position with Kenyon Drake, the number two running back for the Las Vegas Raiders. And now, Miller. Team Miller, who has yet to name his team, is on the board. And he fills his slot with Corey Davis, the new wide receiver for the New York yet uh, New York Jets New York Jets that Zach Wilson will be throwing to So looking over Miller's names he has Elliot Mixon, Robbie Anderson, Corey Davis, Kyle Pitts, Miles Sanders and Kareem Hunt. And in a shocking turn of events, all guts no glory Gets Raheem Mostert to fall all the way to the seventh round. Keep in mind, Trey Sermon was drafted already in this draft. And Raheem Mostert, the actual listed starter, falls to round seven. Is it faith in Trey Sermon? Or is it just that's who they thought was the popular, the popular name going forward? Raheem Mostert has had very good success with the 49ers over the last couple of seasons. Kenny G, Kenny Galladay, comes off the board to the Ancient City Aces. Kenny G in his new team with the New York Giants as they fill a flex position for the Ancient City Aces. Marquez Callaway, who slid in our last draft way down to round 7, or excuse me, round uh, 14. Marquez Callaway, the standout preseason wide receiver for New Orleans, goes to team eight. First defense comes off the board to true players with the Buccaneers. As the first defense comes off the board in round seven. Little bit of a shock having a defense come that early, but it, I believe it was the same round in the last draft. Might have even been the same pick. I'll have to double check, but we have West Coast AJ on the board right now. And he just takes Michael Thomas. And now he starts off round eight. Where is Andrew going with this pick? Does he go quarterback? Maybe now that the first defense is off the board, he goes defense. I don't see him going defense here, though. I see Cortland Sutton sitting there. I don't see him going quarterback. To me, reaching right now if you go quarterback. I don't see a reason to go. LaVisca Chenault goes to his bench. Wide receiver out of Jacksonville. True play as follows it up with Tyler Boyd, Cincinnati wide receiver. So Jamar Chase skipped over yet again Tyler Boyd goes to the bench for true players Johnny Smith goes to team eight tight end as he fills a need right there 
tight end for new starter Mac Jones, rookie quarterback for New England out of Alabama. And now we have Ancient City Aces back on the board. Ladies and gentlemen, we are flying through this draft. It is round eight. We are on the way back, and we are almost halfway through round eight. Ancient City Aces on the clock. Looks like they're probably going to go after some bench spots here to get some solid depth. Because, again, I kind of think reaching if you go defense at this point. <clears throat> Leonard Fournette comes off the board for the Ancient City Aces. Followed by David Johnson, Houston running back. Going to all guts, no glory. Team Miller is on the clock. Taking a little dive into all guts, no glory. Russell Wilson for starting quarterback. Nick Chubb and Raheem Mostert at running back. DK Metcalf and Allen Robinson, wide receivers. Robert Tunyon, big Bob Tunyon at tight end. Mike Evans at the flex position with David Johnson at running back. A couple moves that just took place. Team Miller taking Cortland Sutton, wide receiver out of Denver. And Michael Gallup going to the Pigskin King, wide receiver out of Dallas. <clears throat> Hoyer's Hooligans is on the board. We don't have a big name quarterback coming up for quite some time. Tom Brady is slated to be almost 25 picks lower than Jamar Chase more than 25 picks and yet Tom Brady is still on the board Jamar Chase is still on the board a few picks slated picks later is Devonte Smith Debo Samuel Marvin Jones DJ Chark Jarvis Landry who is a PPR monster is sitting there available and Baker throws Marquise Brown, who's had some issues getting separation, but that should hopefully change this year with Rashad Bateman. Cole Beasley, the Bees, out of Buffalo. Wide receiver out of Buffalo going to Hoyer's Hooligans. And then Marvin Jones Jr. to the Kansas City Kings, Jacksonville's newly acquired wide receiver. Nice Chubb is on the board. Nice Chubb is on the clock, and he takes Devontae Smith, wide receiver, rookie wide receiver out of Philly. And then we see Gravy Train go Antonio Brown immediately, followed by wide receiver pair Jamar Chase and Will Fuller auto-drafted. This is killing me. Beaverton Priority Mail is getting slaughtered on his picks because of the auto-pick, because his auto-draft as now he has his sixth wide receiver, and I can't do anything about it. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup, Brandon Ayuk, Jamar Chase, and Will Fuller. He is going to get slaughtered if he does not get any other picks in here. <clears throat> and we are back to Gravy Train, who recently just picked Antonio Brown before Beaverton Priority Mail had his auto picks. I hate to see this kind of thing happen to somebody, ladies and gentlemen. I believe the roster cap is set at six for wide receiver, so it shouldn't allow the auto draft to go beyond that, but I don't know for certain if it's going to actually stop that for the draft. So hopefully, hopefully, Beaverton Priority Mail logs in before his next picks, which are almost 20 picks away. Nice Chubb is on the board after Zach Moss was taken by Gravy Train. Going for depth. Buffalo running back Zach Moss. Jarvis Landry goes to Nice Chubb. Surprising he lasted this long. We are, Ladies and gentlemen, we are in round nine, and Jarvis Landry finally comes off the board. Melvin Gordon to the Kansas City Kings. The, we'll call him the number two running back. 
Actually, he's probably the starting running back for the time being, but Javante Williams is hot on his trail, the rookie out of UNC. Melvin Gordon to the Kansas City Kings for some depth. Kansas City Kings looking at Patrick Mahomes, Derek Henry, Mike Davis, DeAndre Hopkins, Robert Woods, Logan Thomas, Brandon Cooks, Marvin Jones, and Melvin Gordon. Now we have Hoyer's Hooligans. Let's see if Hoyer's Hooligans finally goes quarterback. We're in round nine and Tom Brady is sitting there, ripe for the plucking. I want you to notice something. If you look at my arrow, these are projected fantasy points, okay? And then you have Tom Brady. <laughs> I do get a kick out of it. Now, I'm all for drafting a quarterback later. But round nine is not a bad spot to grab a quarterback. And there it is. There it is. Hoyer's Hooligans goes Tom Brady. And fills out the last of his position players on his starting roster. Pigskin King takes Debo Samuel, wide receiver out of San Francisco. And Miller is now on the clock. Miller, who also does not have a quarterback, looks like Jalen Hurts and Ryan Tannehill are the next two. Mike Jacecki comes off the board, the tight end for Miami to Miller as he takes a backup to his Kyle Pitts. Andrew chimes in and says, Tom Brady's always okay scoring, you know, no points as long as he wins. <laughs> all right, we have all guts, no glory on the board. Going for depth with Deontay, or excuse me, Devontae Parker wide receiver for Miami, as a shocking that Devontae's fallen this far in drafts that I've noticed. A.J. Dillon, backup running back for Green Bay, goes to the Ancient City Aces, and Jamal Williams, recently acquired by the Detroit Lions to spell DeAndre Swift, goes to Team 8, followed by Sonny Michelle, the Rams' recently acquired running back from the Patriots, goes to True Players. And now, West Coast Andrew goes back to back, rounding out round nine and starting off round 10. Let's see where Andrew goes. He still has not drafted his quarterback. Does Andrew go quarterback? Does he go with Jalen Hurts or Ryan Tannehill or Matthew Stafford maybe? There's also Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, Tua, Tua. Trevor Lawrence is on the board still. Matthew Stafford goes to a and Joe Burrow. Andrew goes back to back quarterbacks, shoring up his starting quarterback with a points flurry from Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, who threw for a lot of touchdowns last year before he got hurt. True Players is now on the board in round 10. I believe, did we see everybody get a, get a, oh, it's eight, oh boy, it's eight wide receivers. It's capped at, oh, this is going to get ugly. This is going to get ugly. Oh, I feel bad for priority mail. This is going to get ugly. He can still get, I think, two more wide receivers. Oh, I hate to see it. I believe we've seen everybody draft a quarterback now. I believe. Or did I miss somebody? Nope. Miller still has not drafted his quarterback. Last and and priority mail has not drafted his quarterback. Harrison Butker goes to true players. First kicker off the board goes in round 
10. Yikes. Yikes. Round 10. And Jordan's saying the same thing. Wow. <laughs> James Conner, Arizona running back. Newly acquired running back goes to team eight. Let me remind you, we are in round 10. We are about halfway through round 10. And Ancient City Aces is on the board. And there is some depth on that free agency list yet. We still have Marquise Brown. Curtis Samuel just came off the board to Ancient City Aces, adding some depth to the wide receiver class for him. All guts, no glory. Goes Dallas Goddard, tight end. Get some depth for you there as well. And Miller is now on the clock. How long does Miller hold out from drafting a quarterback? We're in round 10. And he goes Mike Williams. So he goes one more round without taking a quarterback. Steelers defense comes off the board to the pigskin king. So now we're going to probably start seeing a run of defenses now since we're in round 10. But fear not. Picks 120 and 121 to end round 10 and start round 11 will be wide receiver. Because of the auto draft. Unless four wide receivers come off the board. Maybe hooligans goes wide receiver. And... And Ronald Jones comes off the board. So we're going to see at least one wide receiver come off the board in the auto picks. Ravens defense to Kansas City Kings. Nice Chubb is next up. So it looks like we're going to see back-to-back -back wide receiver picks in the auto draft. So it's going to be DJ Chark and Marquise Brown unless somebody takes those two. Nice Chubb is up. And he has four wide receivers on his roster currently, so unlikely to go wide receiver again. Correction, he has five wide receivers. Something is up with down here. Oh, this must be Miller's. Okay, that's why. And he goes Naheem Hines, running back depth, followed by, oh, oh, yes, yes, Bills D goes off the board to Gravy Train, oh, never mind, and then, yep, DJ Chark and Marquise Brown, sorry, I thought that was the auto draft spots, Naheem Hines goes to Nice Chubb, Gravy Train gets Bills defense, DJ Chark and Marquise Brown go to... Beaverton Priority Mail. This is ugly, folks. I don't like this for him one bit. Oh, Nicole Hardman comes off the board to Gravy Train. I feel bad for Beaverton Priority Mail. Nicole Hardman. Oh. This is why it's important to turn on your alerts to your email for fantasy football. Henry Ruggs goes to Nice Chubb, followed by kicker Young Ho Koo. Atlanta kicker going to Kansas City Kings in round 11. Hoyers Hooligans is on the board. Still has not drafted a defense yet. There's plenty of depth at wide receiver sitting there. There's depth at quarterback sitting there. There's depth at running back sitting there. Devin Singletary is still on the board. Michael Carter for the Jets is sitting there. Rookie running back. We also see guys like 
Jacoby Myers, New England wide receiver. Never too early to pick a young hoe. Jacoby Myers could be seeing some extensive playing time. Nelson Aguilar, another Patriots wide receiver that could potentially see an uptick. Followed by Justin Tucker, kicker for the Pigskin King. Jalen Hurts, Miller, has finally selected a quarterback. Jalen Hurts. Followed by the 49ers defense going to all guts, no glory. Now, this is one that I think a lot of people are, are sleeping on. Because the 49ers were a six-win team last year. And keep in mind, they were obliterated by injuries. Now, the one side, I also see that Sala is no longer there as their defensive coordinator. But they're getting their players back. Washington defense comes off the board to Ancient City Aces. So Ancient City Aces has covered their entire roster outside of the kicker, as a number of people have now, as we were just looking at all guts, did the same thing. Jacoby Myers coming out for T8. Team 8 still has not taken a defense or a kicker, building some depth, getting their wide receivers and running backs covered. As True Players takes Jalen Waddle. For some depth at wide receiver. And now, True Play is still needs to take a tight end. My guess is he will be streaming tight ends all season. West Coast Andrew is up to finish off round 11 and start round 12 for us. He still has a defense and a kicker in his active roster to select, and then two bench spots. So the question becomes, does he go depth? He's got three running backs on his roster, and he takes the Browns defense, gets his defense out of the way, and then drafts a third quarterback in a surprising move. Baker Mayfield. Okay, okay, Andrew might be trying to take a uh, an approach of... Owning some trade bait. Having three quarterbacks on his roster. Now we're back to true players for round 12. Three picks left in this draft for most everybody outside of Andrew. True players needs to get that tight end position filled. Remember, Hunter Henry just signed with the Patriots. And he is dynamic when he's not hurt. Austin Hooper ending up in Cleveland was not a bad thing, but they also still have David and Joku. So where else does tight end come from? And true players goes Michael Pittman Jr., Indianapolis wide receiver, coming back for his second year in the NFL with a new quarterback. And Team 8 goes defense with the Los Angeles Rams to shore up his defense position. Zeus says, I'm going to draft a dope tight end at the end who will start for me all year. I will call you on that, Zeus. That will not happen. <laughs> You're going to need a better tight end unless Hunter Henry goes nuclear this year or Austin Hooper goes nuclear if they're still available even in that position. I don't think they will be. Eh, well, you know, actually, you know what? It, you know what? You, you could end up with one of those two. I think pretty much everybody has their tight end already locked up. Although, oh, 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 I just scrolled down. Zeus, you dirty dog. If he's still available. 
James White comes off the board to Ancient City Aces, followed by Devin Singletary to All Guts No Glory. And that could be a steal right there. All Guts No Glory getting Devin Singletary in round 12. Justin Fields goes to Team Miller as his backup quarterback. So Miller then drafts two quarterbacks in a row after waiting until round 11. And now we're back to Pigskin King with their 12th pick after they have their entire starting roster set. What depth are they adding here? A lot of people just came off the board. J.D. McKissick going to the Pigskin King, Washington running back. Hoyer's Hooligans is on the board. And he goes Ryan Tannehill as his backup quarterback to Tom Brady. Two positions left in the starting roster for Hoyer's Hooligans, and he goes with a backup quarterback. Some people would rather stream their defense. Kicker, a lot of people wait till round 14. It appears Hoyer's Hooligans is doing that for both. Kansas City Kings is on the clock with a full active roster handled. Now just adding depth. Where does Kansas City Kings go? And he goes to a, for the backup quarterback position. So he's got a backup to Patrick Mahomes. Nice Chubb is on the board. Excuse me, Nice Chubb goes Trevor Lawrence to back up Kyler Murray. Avoiding defense and special teams. And kicker. Gravy Train now on the board. Gravy Train has depth to fill and goes with Philip Lindsay. And... Beaverton Priority Mail gets quarterback and defense taken care of. Thank God. And still has a kicker to go. Matt Ryan getting quarterback and Broncos defense. Jason Myers, the Seattle kicker, goes to Gravy Train. And stick around for after the draft, and I'm going to break down every team, and we're going to look at bye weeks and who's in trouble. Nice Chubb is back on the clock. Got to go defense, got to go special teams. One of the two. There's two picks left for most people. This is taking a little while to load. Okay. I was trying to sort by tight end because most people are missing. Well, I actually know most people are missing defense and kicker. This is not wanting to go. Ugly. Very ugly. <clears throat> nice job. Has 10 seconds. Dun, 
Does he go Colts or Patriots? Maybe Vikings defense. Colts defense. Oh, gotcha. That's right. I'm on David's account. That's right. That makes sense. All right. Jalen Rager goes to the Kansas City Kings, followed by the Patriots defense to Hoyer's Hooligans. Pigskin King is now on the clock. Going for depth. I wish I could have just a commissioner's account that didn't have to be tied to a, a team. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. Jets rookie running back. <clears throat> Followed by the Seahawks defense for Team Miller. Matt Gay, Rams kicker, goes to All Guts No Glory. Followed by Brandon McManus. We're in the kicker designation. Brandon McManus, kicker for Denver, goes to Ancient City Aces as people are rounding out their active rosters we have just three picks left in round 13 and then what starts is what I've always called the kicker round and I see nice Chubb has now signed out to just let it auto pick for him because he has his entire roster set aside from his kicker and he's just gonna take whoever the top is Thirty-five seconds left on the clock for Team Eight, who looks like he's not signed in currently. Darnell Mooney. Oh wait, it skipped. Uh, there we go. Elijah Moore goes to Team Eight. Jets wide receiver for depth form. Darnell Mooney, Chicago wide receiver, goes to True Players. Followed by Jameis Winston and Daniel Carlson for Andrew. As Andrew finishes out his draft, Playas gets his last pick and must go tight end. And he goes Gerald Everett, the newly acquired Seahawks tight end. And now Team 8 must draft a kicker to end the draft. Jason Sanders, Ancient City Aces, drafting depth now. All guts, no glory for depth. Team Miller is the next to require a kicker. Trey Lance gets drafted to the Ancient City Aces. This is the second draft in a row I've watched Trey Lance get drafted. Derek Carr goes to All Guts No Glory for depth. Team Miller takes Rodrigo Blankenship for Indy, the kicker. Pigskin King, excuse me, Pigskin King is up next. And there goes my screen because I have to use David's account and I can't see who's left. Tyrell Williams, Detroit wide receiver to the Pigskin Kings. Hoyers Hooligans takes Ryan Suckup, Tampa Bay kicker. The Kansas City Kings takes Austin Hooper at tight end. Graham Gano goes to Nice Chubb. We have Gravy Train that needs depth. Gravy Train. with their final pick. And then obviously Beaverton Priority Mail is gonna end this draft with an auto pick and it should pick a kicker. 
And then as soon as this wraps up, we're going to get into recaps and discussion. Gravy Train has 45 seconds. Thank you, Debbie. Glad you could join us for it. And by the way, I have no clue when it comes to the team names. I don't know who's who aside from one or two people. I don't know who's who talking, I should say, when they're picking their names. Because unless I saw your name and actually noticed who each person was, I have no clue who was who. I know who... And there we go. Chuba Hubbard goes to Gravy Train and Greg Zerline goes to Beaverton Priority. So everybody is squared away. So let's get into breaking this down. Thank you everybody, by the way, for participating in this. This was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to a fun season this year as we're sponsored by Ultra Pro. We have weekly top prizes given away to the high score for the overall league score. Um, and then we obviously have our hobby boxes that are going to be going to our top three overall champions. I'm still working out a deal to potentially get us another sponsor or two this year, but we'll see. It's kind of getting to the point where it's a little late for that. I haven't heard back from them, so I'm assuming it's probably not going to happen. So let's get into this now. So we're going to start with Beaverton Priority Mail, and I feel bad for him because this was auto-drafted and it just went crazy on the wide receivers because that's who was available for him. But overall, it's not a horrible roster. When you look at the starting roster, Matt Ryan, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Daryl Henderson, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Darren Waller, Cooper Cup, Broncos defense, and Greg Zerline. My fear here is going to be his, his bye weeks. Because if you look down into his bench, Brandon Ayuk, Jamar Chase, Will Fuller, uh, DJ Chark, and Marquise Brown. Now, he can come in and make some changes to this. This is a workable roster. He's probably going to have to ditch some of his Week 7 guys or make some trades at least because he's going to lose two wide receivers there. He's going to lose his kicker, and he's going to lose DJ Chark all in the same week. That's four Week 7 buys. Now, yeah, he's got the wide receivers for it, but he's going to have to drop somebody in order to pick up a kicker. Week 11, he's going to run into the same issue because he's got the Denver defense and one of his running backs. He has no running back depth, obviously, for obvious reasons. And then his defense. Cooper Cup is streamable or is uh, is replaceable because he has depth at wide receiver for the flex position, so he's gonna be be getting rid of some guys. He's also got two week sixes, no backup quarterback. So basically, looking at it as he's got no backup tight end, no backup quarterback, no backup running back, no backup defense, no backup kicker. And again, this is because it was a an auto draft, and this is the danger of letting an auto draft happen. His starting roster is not bad, and his backup wide receivers are really good, but he has no depth at any other position. So it's just an unfortunate thing, and I do feel bad for him, but this is why it's important in fantasy football to keep your alerts on. Moving over to Gravy Train. Starting roster, Dak Prescott, Alvin Kamara, Chase Edmonds, Keenan Allen, Odell Beckham Jr., George Kittle, Jamal Williams... Bill's defense, Jacoby Myers, with a bench of, I'm assuming that's Antonio Brown, Zach Moss, Mecole Hardman, Philip Lindsay, and Chuba Hubbard. So if we're going to break down to start with the bye weeks, Dak Prescott at 7, Keenan Allen at 7, Bill's defense at 7, and on the bench, Zach Moss at 7. So the issue you're going to run into right now is you have no backup quarterback. You also have no backup defense. So you're gonna have he's gonna have to be dropping two players right there. See week nine, kicker no backup kicker. Tight end, week six also with Kamara at week six, no backup kicker or excuse me no backup tight end. He's got backup running back so he's fine there. So be watching. This is to me this is this this is where I would be watching his picks, watching his drops because. In those weeks, I'm going to mark this down for me if I'm playing against him, as this is the weeks that he might have to drop a Zach Moss or a Philip Lindsay if Lindsay is actually playing well. 
or Chuba Hubbard or somebody like that because you could end up scoring a really good player off the waiver wire. Nice Chubb starting roster of Kyler Murray, Dalvin Cook, Trey Sermon, and uh, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Noah Fant, Chris Godwin, Colts defense, and Graham Gano. On the bench, Devontae Smith, Jarvis Landry, Naheem Hines, Henry Ruggs, and Trevor Lawrence. Now, if I'm nice, Chubb, I'm rearranging this roster a little bit. Number one, I would put Jarvis Landry in over Chris Godwin. Jarvis Landry is going to put up more points on a day-to-day -day because of he's a possession receiver. So right there, that automatically is going in. I'm not putting Trey Sermon. I, I believe he reached for Trey Sermon. I don't believe that Trey Sermon is going to get the starting nod. And if he does, fantastic. I could be wrong about that. But Raheem Mostert's going to start early in the season. So right out the gate, I'm going to put Naheem Hines in there. And that's only because Naheem Hines is a receiving back. Last year, Naheem Hines stole a lot of catches away from Jonathan Taylor. Now, maybe they go back full with Jonathan Taylor, but Naheem Hines is a very dangerous receiving back. Outside of that, if we're looking at... He's got a backup quarterback. Three backup wide receivers, so you don't have to worry about your moves there. But week 14 could be dangerous because Naheem Hines, Devontae Smith, and Colts defense, and he has no backup defense, so he's going to have to drop somebody there. And this is a roster where I probably wouldn't want to drop any of those players. Naheem Hines might be the droppable. Trey Sermon might be the droppable. Chris Godwin might be the droppable. But this is a tough roster to maneuver just based off the fact that you're going to have to drop somebody to take care of your defense. Now, he has until week 14, so by then, very easily could go through and make some trades. Or maybe we have a injury to somebody or we have a, a, a trade that takes place by, by then. But some clarity will come to the roster. Outside of that, I don't see any issues other than Cook, Lamb, and Lawrence all in the same week, but depth there, so no worries there. So overall, pretty solid for nice Chubb. Moving over to Kansas City Kings. Starting roster of Patrick Mahomes, Derek Henry, Mike Davis, DeAndre Hopkins, Robert Woods, Logan Thomas, Brandon Cooks, Ravens defense, and Young Ho Koo as a kicker. Bench sitting as Marvin Jones, Melvin Gordon, Tua, Jalen Rager, and Austin Hooper. Just looking at the start, there's going to be a lot of movement on his roster weeks 10 through 14. I see it's more going to be 11. 10, a flex. Okay. No defense backup and no kicker backup. So 8 and 6 gonna have to drop somebody and again this is a roster where i don't know if i would be comfortable dropping somebody you've got your backup tight end which austin hooper might end up being your starting tight end over logan thomas you got a you don't have uh, you got a backup quarterback derrick henry and mike davis you have backup running backs you're fine there wide receivers d hop and robert woods along with your flexes cooper cup or excuse me, Brandon Cooks, and you've got Marvin Jones and Jalen Rager, 7 and 14, uh, 11, 12, and 10. So all of his receivers have a different bye week, so he can easily interchange those. The, the problem is going to come in week 8 when he has to drop somebody for his defense, provided he hasn't already dropped the Ravens' defense if they're not playing well, uh, and uh, his kicker, Young Hoku, in week 6. So pretty spread out. I like this. Um, he doesn't have more than two bye weeks on the uh, two people on the same bye week uh, for any position by the looks of it. 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14. Yeah, 11, 11. So there's no more than two. So he has no issues with that other than just having to um, make sure that he covers his depth at defense and kicker. Kansas City Kings. Moving over to Hool uh, Hoyer's Hooligans. Starting roster of Tom Brady, James Robinson, Gus Edwards, Devontae Adams, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Higby, T. Higgins, Patriots defense, Ryan Suckup, with a bench of Damian Harris, 
Cole Beasley, Ronald Jones, Nelson Aguilar, and Ryan Tannehill. Looking at bye weeks first, I see three nines. Tom Brady, Ryan Suckup, and Ronald Jones. Not an issue, considering you have a backup quarterback with a different bye week. You have enough running backs on your roster. You're fine there. But your kicker is going to force you to drop somebody. Your defense is going to force you to drop somebody. So as long as you don't have conflicting bye weeks in your main roster with one of those two, you're fine. And it looks like you are. Week 6, only one. Week 8, only one. Week 7, Beasley and Robinson. Fine there because you got plenty of change there. 13, only one. 14, two. You're fine. The three, you're fine there, though. Uh, you're obviously going to have to change your defense. So, Hoyer's Hooligans, again, pretty solid spread on this one. And doesn't appear that you're going to have any major conflicting bye week scheduling other than the guys, the, the players that you don't have backups for. Moving over to Pigskin King. Starting roster of Lamar Jackson, Clyde Edwards Elaire, David Montgomery, Amari Cooper, Juju Smith Schuster, Travis Kelsey, Kenyon Drake, Steelers defense, and Josh Tucker. Bench sitting at Michael Gallup, Debo Samuel, JD, uh, JD McKissick, Michael Carter, and which Williams is this? Tyrell Williams. Detroit wide receiver, I believe that is. Okay, so I see a lot of sevens on here. Cooper, Smith Schuster, Steelers defense, and Gallup. See, this is where the problem is going to come into play. So you're going to lose Cooper, Smith Schuster, and Gallup, three of your receivers. Debo Samuel and uh, Tyrell Williams could be your fillers there, but then you're still losing your Steelers defense. So you're going to have to drop somebody and pick them, pick up somebody. Okay, so week seven is going to be gritty. Week six, it looks like you got two, no issues. Week nine, you got two, no issues. Week eight, your kicker, your quarterback, which you don't have a backup quarterback for. So there's two people you're going to have to drop. And then your flex running back, which is fine because you have one on your bench. So this is where Pigskin King could run into some issues because of having one quarterback and having a kicker with no backup. So right there is going to be two players they're going to have to drop in order to get that those two roles filled. Now, they could run with no kicker. I've seen that happen because in week seven, they're going to have to pick up another player anyways, or another defense anyways, so they're going to have to drop somebody. Maybe they pick up a streaming defense for the week and then drop that defense the next week just to replace their quarterback and then run with no kicker. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many times. And between now and then, I highly doubt they're going to dro drop Justin Tucker. But Justin Tucker could get hurt. A lot of things could happen between now and then. Moving over to Team Miller, who has yet to pick a name. But I'm assuming that's going to come here so soon once he figures out what he wants to do. I'm assuming it's going to be something based off of Hertz, like Hertz Field, maybe. Jalen Hurts at starting quarterback, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Mixon, Robbie Anderson, Corey Davis, Kyle Pitts, Miles Sanders, Seahawks defense, and Rodrigo Blankenship at kicker. On the bench, Kareem Hunt, Cortland Sutton, Mike Jacecki, Mike Williams, and Justin Fields. Looking this one over, week 14, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Rodrigo Blankenship, and Mike Jacecki. You don't have to worry about your tight end. You've got your quarterback covered but your defense, or excuse me, your kicker. Your flex position is fine, but you're going to have to uh, grab somebody else for your kicker. And maybe that ends up being a Mike Williams drop or a Justin Fields drop, depending on, or maybe make some trades in the meantime. But week 14 shouldn't be a big problem because it looks like everybody in the Ross, or everybody in the league has been having one player that they're going to have to drop at least. Week six, two, no issue. Week seven, two, no issue. None week eight. Week nine, 
one, no issue. Week 10, one, no issue. Week 11, one, no issue. Week 13, two, no issue. Week 14, we discussed. All right. So week 10, 10 and 10, mixing fields, shouldn't be an issue. So Team Miller looking overall pretty set. Just got to hope that Joe Mixon has a year like he did before. <clears throat> All guts, no glory. Starting roster of Russell Wilson, Nick Chubb, Raheem Mostert, DK Metcalf, Allen Robinson, Robert Tanyan, Mike Evans, 49ers defense, and Matt Gay. I can never remember what his first name is. Bench, David Johnson, De uh, Devontae Parker, Dallas Goddard, Devin Singletary, and Derek Carr. They went with the D's. All guts, no glory went with the D's for first names for the bench. That was a requirement to be on their bench. Your first name had to start with a D. The first thing I'm going to point out on this one is week nine. Three starters in week nine. And you have two of them being wide receivers. With only one wide receiver backup. Now granted, yes, one of them is a flex position, which you have covered. Backup quarterback, Derek Carr. Okay, that works. Nick Chubb in 13 with Robert Tanyan at 13. You have tight end Dallas Goddard for the next week. You're fine there. Devontae Parker at week 14 alongside of him. Wide receiver, you're good there. Week 6, losing Mostert and the uh, 49ers defense. You have a backup running back. God, who would you drop for that week? Probably going to be David Johnson because I don't have any faith in him with Houston this year. Because I wouldn't want to drop Devin Singletary because I actually think he's going to end up being the number one overall in Buffalo. But there's one player that's going to have to be dropped right there. So overall, pretty solid lineup coming right there with uh, a couple of Seattle players. Moving over to Ancient City Aces with a starting roster of Aaron Rodgers, Austin Eckler, Miles Gaskin, Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore, Mark Andrews, Kenny Galladay, Washington Defense, and Brandon McManus with a bench of Leonard Fournette, A.J. Dillon, Curtis Samuel, James White, and Trey Lance. Where are we at for bye weeks? Week 13, I see, has three, no issues. Week 7 has two, no issues. Week 14 has two, running backs. No issues because you have depth. Week 9, your defense, typical, going to have to replace them. Week 11, kicker, typical, going to have to replace them. So three week 9s but not an issue. Week seven, not an issue. Yeah, good spread on that one as well. Way to not load yourself in on week seven <coughs> or week nine to uh, really thump yourself. So Ancient City Aces looking pretty solid overall on the spread as well. Team eight, starting roster of Justin Herbert, Najee Harris, Chris Carson, Tyreek Hill, Terry McLaurin, Johnu Smith, Julio Jones, Rams defense, Jason Sanders at kicker, on the bench, Marcus Calloway. Uh, is that Marcus? That is his name, isn't it? Yeah, Marquez Calloway. And this is must be uh, Jamal Williams. Yep. James Conner, Jacoby Myers. Is that Jacoby? Yep. And El uh, Elijah Moore. I'm assuming that's, yep, rookie Elijah Moore. All right, so looking at bye weeks here. Week 7 for quarterback and starting running back. No quarterback depth. Running back has depth. Going to need a quarterback. Week 12. You're fine. Week 9. Could be a problem. Chris Carson, Terry McLaurin, and Jamal Williams all on by. Should be fine, though. Provided Myers and Moore. Provided Myers and Moore end up solid contributors. That's that's a gamble. That is a gamble. But either way, they're plug-and-plays. Outside of that, 
I don't see any issues on the roster. You have a tight end, obviously, with no backup. You have a defense with no backup and a kicker with no backup. That's typical. There's going to be some spots you're going to have to drop players here and there. No big deal. T8. True play is Zeus. <clears throat> Starting roster. Josh Allen, Jonathan Taylor, Antonio Gibson, Deontay Johnson, Jerry Judy, Gerald Everett, Jaco uh, Josh Jacobs. That's a lot of jizz. Um, Buccaneers defense, Harrison Butker. On the bench, Tyler Boyd, Sony Michelle, Jalen Waddle, Michael Pittman, and Darnell Mooney. Are we going to see any issues with bye weeks? Allen and Johnson are seven, no issue, except no backup to the quarterback. Week 14, Waddle and Pittman with Jonathan Taylor. You got a running back. You can plug in week nine. Bucks defense with no backup with Antonio Gibson going on the shelf. No, nope. Harrison Butker, no backup. So, I mean, just typical. No backup tight end, no backup uh, running, uh, excuse me, uh, no backup tight end, no backup defense, no backup kicker. So that's typical. Nothing out of the ordinary on that. It's just a matter of where the depth goes. Because if Sony Michelle doesn't actually contribute in Los Angeles, or if Tyler Boyd can't get the ball, Waddle should be fine. Pittman should be fine. Darnell Mooney plays for Chicago, so that's question mark. So it's a lot of it's just going to boil down to how well the depth handles this. I see no issues with the bye week scheduling currently other than just having to get rid of you know move over on his uh, three that he has no backups for west coast andrew i would agree it's one of the wide receivers that's going to get cut yep i would i would agree with that zeus uh west coast andrew starting roster of matt stafford aaron jones saquon barkley t uh tyler lockett chase claypool tj hawkinson deandre swift browns defense and Dylan Carlson, Daniel Carlson, kicker, with bench of Michael Thomas, LaVisca Chenault, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, and Jameis Winston. He went four quarterbacks. Um, having Michael Thomas fall as low as he did was a shock to me. Um, putting Burrow, ba uh, Baker, and Jameis with Matt Stafford on the same team, another shock. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised that four quarterbacks ended up on the one team. What I'm seeing here, as far as depth goes, obviously with having four quarterbacks and two wide receivers as your depth, no tight end, no defense, no kicker, and no running back for depth. Um, four, four positions, so there's going to have to be some drops here or trades here, which my guess is Andrew should be able to leverage at least two of his quarterbacks into trades to get some other players here. Jones and Barkley, and now this is, I mentioned this on the show this week, Barkley scares the bejeebus out of me because I don't know how good he's going to hold up. Now, having Barkley at 10 isn't an issue, but having Hawkinson, Swift, and Lockett all on 9 creates a problem with no backup wide receiver, or no backup running back depth, but he can put at least a wide receiver into flex, he has no tight end, so somebody's going to have to get dropped. And then he's going to have to put another wide receiver in to cover Lockett. So nine actually should turn out okay, other than having to drop somebody to get Hawkinson covered. Week 13 is going to be a problem, though, because, well, he could run Swift up to cover Aaron Jones, but he's still going to have to cover for the defense. Week 8, going to have to have somebody cover there as well for the kicker. Quarterback, obviously, he's got four options. It's fine there. Sticky situation that Andrew is is potentially looking at to start with, but could leverage this into a solid space to be because this is a 12-team league and he has four quarterbacks on his roster. Now the question is, is will all four be starting quarterback potential? But not just starting quarterback potential trade material because are they going to be good enough for somebody to give up because they're that much better than their other players so that's where that's where my question lies interesting strategy 
I, I it's rare I see somebody go with that many quarterbacks on a roster in order to hold people hostage. Very interesting. I'm going to definitely be paying attention to Andrew's roster going forward because I definitely want to see how this pans out with those four quarterbacks and if it pays off on the trade market. So that was the 12th team, West Coast Andrew, and that was division number one draft for the Sports Stuff Hub Fantasy Football League. Draft three will take place either Tuesday or Wednesday as we get it filled. And we'll be doing this again for that night. If it's on Wednesday, it'll be during break night. If it's on Tuesday, it will replace Sports Stuff Hub Live. As if we have a fantasy football draft on Sports Stuff Hub Live, there's not a big problem with that in my mind because I get to talk sports the entire time. Um, this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm digging where this league has gone so far. This I will say this league is probably more balanced than the draft number one. I saw some out in left field draft picks in one. Now, there were some in this one as well, but I think this one's a little more balanced. So, I'm going to wrap this up as this was the recap from draft number, division number one for the Sports Stuff Hub Fantasy Football League sponsored by Ultra Pro. So, I hope you guys had fun. I thank you for tuning in. This was a lot of fun to be able to cover the draft like this. I'm going to do this again for the next draft as well. And I'm going to continue to do this every year and make this as big as possible. So uh, thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you had fun, and I hope this season turns out to be a blast. I'm looking forward to every bit of it. So good luck, everybody, going forward, and I will see you guys for the next draft in a few days. Have a good night, everybody.